Detroit. It's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. Oh, yeah. What was the last time you were here? Well, let's see. Life for, to live. Or just been here? Oh, a couple of years. A couple of years? And when, yeah. when did you last live here? Um, 1993. Okay, there you go, 93. Do you know that the building that we're in right now, this actual building, was the original hope that the Pistons played here in the 60s and 70s. This building has been converted. This is actually one of the first places ever. This is a this is kind of Pistons, uh, you know, holy ground right now. Did you aware that we were here? Never knew that. It's pretty cool, right? Did you guys know that? You say yes. <laughs> what one person answered, like they're wondering what's happening right now. <laughs> uh, well, this is exciting to have you to have you here. Thank you so much for, for being a part of this. Thank you. Uh, I know there are some, like, questions that I, I want to ask and get into. Uh, but this is a, obviously where the digital marketing thing, and I think as far as, like, marketing and personal branding and things, we can really talk about that. But as a, as a fan and as somebody that wants to know some, like, really fun, like, interesting information, uh, I kind of want to just crack into some, some basketball, if I could. Uh, you said in an interview once that when you played for Chicago, off the court, you didn't talk. Uh, <laughs> you've heard of Chicago, great. Why don't you oh, I just chill out? Uh, we'll get Jordan. Uh, and you said in an interview that you, uh, Jordan and Pippen, off the court, that when you guys didn't commute, like you didn't talk, it was all done on the court and nothing beyond that. Is that, is that true? Yeah, when I went to uh, Chicago, I think it should be Jordan. When I went to Chicago, I still had an attitude adjustment to make. Um, I really just talked to Scotty or Michael for the first eight months when I first went there. And we talked in practice. We didn't talk in public. We talked over the court. Right. But uh, I think it was one of those things where I had to get used to, to, to being in Chicago. Because I was in Detroit for such, such a long time. And just like skip, hop, skip, and jump. And, uh, uh, Chicago. It's not a fun, it's not a fun track. track comes out. So after about the eight, eight months or so, there was, there was more, like, kind of personal oh, yeah, stuff? Yeah, there was more interaction. After that first championship for me, after, after four years, and the four for, for me, for Chicago, I started to talk to the players after that first year. Oh, wow. But it was, it was funny, though, that first year, I didn't talk to the players, I talked to their wives. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I think that's a different conference. <laughs> that's that's that we're <laughs> I told them, not like that, but it's more like I, I got along with them wise more because they saw me as this uh, this character, more like a uh, free will, just uh, a little back to the fullest. And many of being wise, it's very difficult if you guys understand what I'm saying. <laughs> so uh, I think they, 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 they communicate with me very well. I was both a single guy at the time. Yeah, and you're more approachable. It seemed like yeah. more more approachable. Very much. Yeah, that's, that's now to, to relate it to what we're doing here. You won a championship before really establishing anything off the court with Kevin and Jordan. Which, yeah. So that's a, that's kind of incredible that the three of you could put that together and only really. Is there some advice that you could give having gone through that? Let's say somebody here has to work with, and in order to be successful has to work with somebody that they just do not communicate with or they don't get along with outside of work. Can you, can you offer any advice based on your experience or something like that? Well, I believe in Detroit. After all that turmoil and all that conflict that was ever seen when I left in Detroit, I went to uh, San Antonio. My attitude wasn't trying to get along with the team there or even with the, with the organization. My attitude was more like, fuck you and fuck you, <laughs> pretty much. And it's more like, okay, great, I'm gonna start playing for Dennis Schreiber. I'm gonna start living for me. Because when I was in Detroit, I had the mind to grow up to be a human being and an adult. Because I was such a, uh, a 25 year old in a kid's mind, and my mind was like a kid. But once I lived here, I went to uh, San Antonio, I grew up really fast. And um, I thought the fact that I said, you know what, I don't need to like you to win. I don't even like you to win. I just want to win and make money and be happy. That's it. You can hate me or love me. As long as I'm doing my job, that's the most, that's most important thing for you and for the people. So I learned that when I went to San Antonio and then when I went to Chicago, it was a whole different thing. No. All of a sudden, I didn't realize 
that I, I started something so unique in sports. I started a brand. You have just not just out of the blue. I didn't even realize what the fuck I was doing. What was out of the blue out of the red? I was just running out of this running amok, going out to gay clubs, been at the drag queen, doing all this bullshit, right? But I didn't know I was I was starting up uh, this this cult, this brand, you know, off the court and being an athlete. And I realized I was starting something so 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 real when I started seeing kids, babies, grandmothers, grandfathers start to emulate me. And I'm, I'm, I'm walking around and playing with the, the greatest athletes on, on the planet, and they're, they're emulating Dennis Rodman. Well, you, you kind of created a, a personal brand in that kind of fashion long before social media. So you're kind of the original influencer, if you will. Yeah. And, but now that's like sort of the model for how people want to kind of act and react. But you were the original one to do that. I did that shit dude, back in the day. <laughs> You know, if you want to see social media, you take the 95, 95 to 98 or 99 season, you take those four years, if you look at those 95 99, who was the only athlete on, in the world that was trendy? Dennis Rodman, ladies and gentlemen, that's who. I was the only one that was trendy back then, because what I was doing, it was so, it, it was so out the norm. Out the norm in sports, you had your Michael Jordan, you had your Magic Johnson, you had all the other athletes around the world, but no one ever stood out as a as a flamboyant human being in sports but me. I wasn't trying to. I was just going and having a good time, living life, living life to the fullest. But I knew what I had, but I didn't bring it. So you, it wasn't necessarily a conscious decision to do that. You were just being you. But being you. Anyone at the time that wanted to stand out and be them, it, was kind of, it wasn't necessarily a thing that people were wanting out of their athletes or their, their you know, professional people in the, in the spotlight like that. You just were like, fuck it, I'm going to do me. I'm just going to do me. I think today's world, I think so many people are so copycat with each other as human beings because you got the social media, you got the, you got the um, um, all your outlets right now as well as electronics. It's very difficult to try to come up with something very original. You know, the most, the most, uh, the most branded things today is what is happening, if you guys don't realize, it's the most smallest shit on the planet that you don't even know, but it's right there. You know, it's like tissue paper. Wow, that's a brand. I'm like, what is, is this? Like, it's like the shoes you wear in the hospital. That's a brand now. It's out the blue. There's something that's out the blue that you never, never thought of. That's a brand. What is it? Microsoft got it. You know, Google got it, Amazon got it, all these big companies around the world got it. That's why they got people like you to try to create it. That's why you guys are here to try to come up and find out what's the next big thing. What is it? So what, what would you, what can you say, having gone through that in your career, being somebody that was put in the spotlight, for, be, for being unique and for having your own personality shine, how can people do that today with your brand or with their products? What, what, what would you recommend if there was like one thing that you say, this is what you need to do to, to, to stand out in the, the muck of people just, everyone's copying everybody, what do you think that they can do? I think if everyone in the world should understand that the fact that life is moving so fast, what brands are happening today that's, that's that's not already has been happening. Say, Calvin Klein, Jordans, all these brands back in the 70s and 80s. What's well, really trendy today? Look at Champions, they're back. Feel up. Feel up, they're back. Uh, all these brands that was happening that went down are back now because the G, G generation, the youth of America is doing it. They never seen that before. If you think back, just think back, okay, the 30s and 40s and 50s, look at the trend then. Look at the trend then. Go back and see some of those things back then. And just try to, try to, try to mix something together and try to blend it today. Because a lot of things that they have been trending has come back from the future. I mean, from, from the past, sorry. From the past. If you ever notice. That's interesting. That's how I look at it. Because if, if you look at anything today, they had the movie one. 2010, 2011, 2000, whatever, something like that. That happened, what, 20 years ago? Yeah. And look what's happening. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you go back and 
take some of the future. Go to the past. Yeah. Just look to the future. Just look to, look to, look to the past and look at the future. I'm hoping that somebody can bring back Jenkos. That's what I'm hoping is the next big. <laughs> I want my I want my Juggalo jeans back. That's right. what I'm hoping for. That question, uh, Julie Woods, thank you. She tweeted that into us, and thank you. I love your interview. Thank you for that. Um, let me ask you this about just kind of personal branding. Is there anything looking back as far as style or something that you did with your by bringing out your personality? Is there any, is there any like specific style regret that you have, like a color hair? Or is there like an outfit you wore that you were like, oh, I probably should like now looking back, is there something that you think like that haircut wasn't? Or a piercing that hurts so much so you're like, why do I have this? <laughs> is it piercings? I'm trying to get piercings and I want to know. <laughs> is it worth it? You're funny. <laughs> Can somebody tweet I, that that Dennis Robinson so was funny? Can somebody just do me a favor? <laughs> so we yeah, have um, it's, it's, it's just wonderful to just live, just to live life to understand. I love creating. I create every day. When, when, I'm, when I'm walking, I create. When I'm dreaming, I create. When I'm on a plane, I just create all the time. I watch people to create. That's why I watch. I love doing it. It's interesting too because you've been in the building a little bit right. since you've been here. And if so, from a distance, if somebody doesn't know that's Dennis Rodman, people are turning their heads going, who is that? Who is that? Because you, you have a presence. You, you're absolutely right. People say that all the time. Oh, wherever I go, I'm creating a style. But legitimately, in the hours or even in the building, I, everyone's looking, going, who is that? What is he doing? Because you create a style. You have a style walking around. You're, you're absolutely correct. You are exactly that. So I'm going to give you guys one thing before I leave. I know it's a you know, marketing thing. I think I'm the only admin in this. And who cares? Not the sign of your name. It's so what I know is this Everybody, you know, maybe have something to live by. It's amazing when you get judged as far as when you want to come out with some creativity in, in your in your business. It don't hurt to be creative. It doesn't hurt to be creative. Look at Steve Jobs. Look what he did before he died. Look what he did. He created some, pretty much the world with technology. Look at that guy. He was dying on his deathbed. Apple asked him to come back before he died to create the future. Anyone know that? That he was dying? And he, they made him come back and create all these, these things, the technologies, the iPhones and stuff like that. He did that. That's what I'm going to do for the future for the youth of America. I'm going to show the youth of America it's okay to be fun and eccentric and exciting and fun. It's okay to, to, to think. It don't hurt to think of great ideas. It don't pay, it, it, you know, you can pay to think. I don't like that. I want to have, I want to have my own ability to think yeah. and create something that's very cool for people to like. For people to like. And it works, and because it here you are. You're still here at 58 to go. That's a great shit. Um, so, before, we, before we wrap it up, I do want to uh, recommend that everybody, for the love of God, please follow Dennis on Instagram. It's hilarious and incredible. <laughs> uh, I truly mean that. Also, this is fun and exciting. Uh, you can also now officially, it's official, we can get uh, Dennis on, on Cameo, which is very exciting. Uh, I, I am also on Cameo, uh, but no, no, it's like, a, it's a nickel. But the point is, <laughs> is that uh, you've joined the ranks of, you know, Snoop Dogg and all these other great uh, celebrities that are on. That's incredible. That's cool, man. So, so, so feel free to uh, get, a, get a shout out. Yeah, sure. shout out. Shout out. Right. <laughs> uh, that's, that's it was cool to be here, guys. That's Back in Detroit in, in a Pistons arena from the 60s and 70s. What an incredible moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Rodman, everybody. Come on, let's go.